by the Controllers Council. Next. My name is Neil Brown, Executive Director of the Controllers Council. And before I introduce our expert panelist and our partner sponsor, let me share some brief housekeeping items. We'll have Q&A at the end of the presentation, so please use your GoToWebinar control panel to ask our expert questions. Next, while the webinar is not CPE eligible today, we will have a few polling questions simply to allow you to benchmark your peers. So again, please use your GoToWebinar control panel to answer polls. Finally, you'll receive a link to this webcast via email in the next 24 hours, so no need for notes or screenshots. Next, please. With that, I'd like to say a word about our partner and sponsor, Divi, a bill, spend, and expense management solution that gives small and mid-sized businesses the credit they need and helps them save time and money by automating expense reports, budgets, and reimbursement processing all in one place. The free software and card combination provides real-time insight into employee spending and better fraud protection with virtual cards. Learn more at getdivvy.com. Next. So with that, I'm very pleased to introduce our subject matter expert, Rami Assad, who is VP Product Insights and FP&A at Bill and Divi. Rami, please take it away. Hey, thanks so much, Neil. Um, thank you all for joining the webinar today. Um, as mentioned, my name is Rami Assad. I am uh, the VP of Product Insights, Analytics, and FP&A at uh, Bill. Um, and this came about because I was the co-founder and CEO of a company called Finmark um, that was acquired by Bill um, in November of last year. Finmark was financial and pl planning and analysis software for SMBs. Um, I, in my career, have been founder and CEO of three companies uh, that I've sold and exited, COO and CEO of a number of others that I didn't co-found. And even right out of college, uh, my first endeavor was building, was, was owning and running a kiosk in the mall as a small business owner. And both as CEO, COO, and a small business owner, I felt the pain of understanding my cash flow, understanding my metrics, my my financial plan altogether. And so, in uh, in coming about um, in my last venture, I, I decided to take this on and, and tackle it and build Finmark to help other SMBs hopefully improve on uh, the pain points that I felt uh, through my career. And so, with that, um, you know. Uh, Neil mentioned uh, Divi. This this webinar is um, sponsored by by Bill. Um, Divi is one of the products that we have here at Bill. Spend and expense credit software to easily allow you to manage your spend and manage budgets um, without having to worry about um, doing a lot of manual tedious tasks. It's software that makes it a lot easier to manage virtual cards, physical cards, and your employees spend. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention Finmark, um, financial planning software that's offered by Bill. Um, this is my my baby that uh, I, I, we worked so hard on and, and continue to work on here at Bill. Um, this is software built for SMBs that lets you connect into your general ledger, your CRM, your payroll software, gives you automated reporting, consolidates all that information, and lets you put a forward-looking forecast on top of um, all of that data that we bring together. Gives you the ability to collaborate with others and, um, and pull out really insightful analytics and insights to hopefully uh, get a better handle on your business. And so with that, um, let's kick things off. Um, you know, we're today here to talk about FP&A, which can be a serious, thoughtful, sometimes scary subject, um, but it doesn't always have to be. Um, and in fact, I think it, it's it's healthy that we take FP&A with a grain of salt. And one of my favorite quotes is uh, from George Box, um, who's you know a, an incredibly famous statistician, worked a lot on forecasts, and and after you know decades of of hard work, he came out and and said, you know, essentially all models are wrong. 
um, but some models are useful. And that, that was, that's been my mantra um, for, for the past five years as, as I thought about and built out Finmark. Um, how can we use FPNA to help inform what we do without being so precise, so caught in the weeds that it makes it impossible for us to get, um, to, to get anywhere with our forecasts, with, with our models? And so hopefully today we'll talk about how do we use our financial planning as a tool for driving success, right? Um, what are the, the ways that we can um, help hopefully map our planning cycle, collaborate with others? And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the benefits of um, how software can help you overcome some of the hurdles that you might experience with FPNA. Um, you know, throughout the webinar, you'll see screenshots of our own um, software from Finmark um, by Bill. Um, but you'll also we'll also talk about how other software tools exist. Everything from you know how to use Excel to um, some of the other competitors in the FPNA category. And before I can officially get started, um, I do have to um, at least flash up. Uh, the legal disclaimer, um, lawyers want to make sure that you understand that this is not advice, this is not um, strategy, you should consult with your own accounting firm, your finance teams, um, I am not responsible for the performance of your financial plans. All right, with that out of the way, um, before I jump into my slides, why don't we kick it off with a quick poll to get a sense of why did you guys join today? I want to make sure that I understand from you, what are we hoping to accomplish? What do we want to talk about? Um, this will help guide some of the discussion. So uh, if you could, real quick, let us know why did you join the webinar? Yes, uh, please uh, vote early and often like we do in Chicago here. And uh, we'll just uh, take a quick look, share the results, and uh, keep going. So let's go ahead and share the results. Rami, any perspective on this? All right, so people want to learn more about financial planning. That's great. Um, you want to enhance your existing capabilities as the next up um, piece. It, it seems like there is a lot of appetite to, you know, for entry level getting some basics right. Um, even though, um, you know, the, I'm relatively new, I guess, is, is the, the least most important. Um, I, my, my takeaway from this is we have kind of a blending of experiences. So we'll try not to, uh, as I say, maybe mansplain too much on the basics, but give enough foundation for um, the entry level users. And then hopefully give you guys some, some 201, 301 level tips to take you that next level with your financial planning. All right, so I have to start with laying the groundwork. What is financial planning? Um, if if you think about it, your financial plan is your game plan, right? You wouldn't go about building a house without first putting together blueprints. You're not going to wing it. Uh, so I, I just don't understand why people try to build a business without first putting together a financial plan. Your financial plan literally should articulate what you plan to do in your business from how you get your customers to how much money you make to who you're going to hire. Everything about your business should be articulated in numbers through your financial plan. Ideally, this will also give you some um, projections out to the future um, based off of data from the past. Um, not all you don't always have data as a starting point. So sometimes you just want to make assumptions, but you want to project out into the future what you think you're going to do. But at the same time, you also want to use your financial plan to look backwards to say how did how have I done historically, not just across key metrics, but across what I said I was going to do, 
right? And so this financial plan isn't a one-time thing. It's a living, breathing document. It is a, a process that you're going to continue to iterate on to make sure that um, you're constantly looking forward and looking backward to know where you've been, where you are, and where you're headed.